You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. And welcome to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community. This is Ben Wolf, your host as always, and uh, a very, very special guest today. I know I always say that, but this time it really is true. It's always really true, but this time it's really, really true. Um, we're going to cover with our guest today how entrepreneurial business owners uh, are being helped through these incredibly hard and ever-changing times by the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, and the EOS Worldwide Organization. Um, and before we get into that, I want to remind everybody, whether you're watching this on YouTube, listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it might be, subscribe, leave a review, and uh, you know, share it with others. Uh, it truly does make the information and the knowledge that we're sharing here accessible to more people and obviously to yourself, the big, being the biggest beneficiary in the future. Uh, and uh, with that, I want to get into introducing our, our, our special guest today. Uh, she is the integrator, which is similar to a COO, and we'll discuss that later, uh, and president of EOS Worldwide, uh, which is the organization dedicated to promulgating uh, the Entrepreneurial Operating System, this comprehensive set of tools that uh, helps business owners get more of what they want from their business. We'll get more into that. Uh, she has previously spent 20 years in the financial advisory field, including as a chief operating officer. You can find out more about her work and EOS's work at eosworldwide.com. And with that, I give you Kelly Knight. Welcome, Kelly. Oh, it's great to be here, Ben. Thanks for having me. Well, no problem. It's my honor. And, you know, and I've got to say, it's an extremely special episode for me personally. Uh, I found out about EOS when the founder of the organization that I joined and was helping build, uh, which is called Freedom Care in the healthcare space. And, uh, and he, he discovered EOS and told us about Jonathan Smith, the certified EOS implementer, one of the, you know, one of the really leading uh, members and mentors in the EOS worldwide community. And he was, you know, he was, he was our EOS implementer and I was working with him as a client uh, for three years doing EOS in our business, which we grew from zero when I joined, to, you know, to the largest and fastest growing organization of its type in, the, uh, in New York State and, and, and now, you know, now getting nationwide. But um, anyway, so it was just a great and transformational for me. Uh, for people who are listening to this regularly know that I'm personally an EOS implementer. So I use, you know, I help companies implement these EOS tools to get more of what they want, get focus, figure out where they want to go, how they want to get there and, you know, teach them and help them implement a simple set of tools, EOS, to actually achieve that with discipline and accountability. So they can have, you know, lives and businesses that are more profitable, more fun uh, and, and more scalable. So it's just an honor to me to talk to, to you, Kelly, as the, uh, as the integrator of EOS Worldwide. Uh, and if, if you don't mind starting, and like I ask all the guests to just give us like a quick two minute background, maybe what's not on your quote unquote paper resume, that'll just help people understand how you got to be what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think you teed it up beautifully in that I spent 20 years in the financial services industry. I was a financial advisor myself straight out of college for a big RIA company called Ameriprise. Mm -hmm. I sold that practice and I did a startup in California and then came back to Michigan and did some broker dealer RIA work here. And then you know, interesting. And what, for those who don't know, what does RIA stand for? Oh, Registered Investment Advisory, Managed Thank Money you. Organization and Broker Dealer. Thank you for calling that out. Acronyms are the death of us all. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, essentially just in financial services my entire career. And so many will ask me, how then did you make the transformation to a training, coaching, leadership organization? Right. And, um, you know, I would say this, it's that the, there's a similarity in the business models in that I was a chief operating officer serving advisors, financial advisors who had mm -hmm. clients. And at EOS, I serve at the center of our business model, professional EOS implementers who in turn have clients. So there is very much a similarity in the business model. Mm -hmm. um, I would say as well, my entire career um, I'm a curious person. I am a learner profile in every mm -hmm. single step of that way. Um, 
I was always seeking to kind of get a better understanding of the business, whatever that business was. Mm -hmm. Volunteering and raising my hand to be part of technology projects or to lead a pilot program. And so born out of that was this kind of jack of all trades, master of none, which is how I describe myself as very much okay. a generalist. I'm not a specialist at anything that I do, but it kind of perfectly crafted and molded me to be the integrator for EOS worldwide. So that's kind of a little, little that's not on my paper resume or on my LinkedIn right. profile. Right. Now that is cool. And, and as we, as we get into that, you know, we don't often directly talk about EOS, you know, it come, it comes up a lot, a lot of times on, on these episodes and with different yeah. guests, some of which, you know, we've actually had a nice integrator visionary pair together, uh, which is very, which is very cool. We had the opportunity to do once, but we don't often like start from a, you know, like what, just, you know, not, you know, just briefly, what is EOS? How does it serve businesses? I mean, there's like a, intro, brief yeah. intro on that. I mean, EOS in its simplest form is we just help entrepreneurs and leadership teams get what they want from their business. And we do that with a very simple, practical set of tools and a process that make it easy for leadership teams to issue solve and handle a lot of the big complex things, bring it down to earth and make it as simplified as possible. And so, um, you know, we do that through vision, traction, and healthy. We call mm -hmm. that ETH for sure. Okay. And so vision is where you're getting leaders and leadership team members 100% on the same page with where the organization is going and how we're going to get there. Uh, the second piece of that is traction from the standpoint of it's helping leaders to become more disciplined and accountable, executing well uh, to achieve every part of that company's vision. And then the third part of it is healthy, meaning leaders are becoming a healthy, functional, cohesive leadership team. And unfortunately, many uh, leadership teams and entrepreneurs don't do that particularly well. So mm -hmm. here at EOS, we just get really clear and real and raw about all of that um, so that leadership teams can run faster and better and really knock it out of the ballpark with whatever it is they want to, to achieve. And I, and I do appreciate that, you know, just being able to concisely, you know, concisely capture what it is and you know so people can see if that's something that uh if that's something that they need for the issues that they're having and i guess what's, what's really interesting and what's surprising about your story is that i mean you might think that the integrator the coo of us worldwide you would you know one might have thought or i would have thought previously you know was in was somebody running eos in their business and they were already an eos integrator somewhere um, but you didn't come from that background. You came from a great executive background and all this diverse, interesting experience, but not having done, not having been in an EOS company before until you got to the act, the EOS company, EOS worldwide. So like, I guess what, what did you notice when you started, when you learned EOS, just as the integrator of any organization for the first time happened to be EOS worldwide, but what did you learn? What did you see? What did you observe? I guess that might have surprised you of running a company on EOS versus whatever you saw before. Right. Well, great question. I've got two, two pieces to the answer for you. So while I didn't know EOS in its purest format, I did work with a leadership coach that used bits and pieces work. So mm -hmm. the combination of EOS and, and some other training and leadership tools. Um, and so while I knew what rocks were in an L10 and certain mm -hmm. pieces, I didn't mm -hmm. have seen it holistically put together as a package. And so coming right. to EOS as the integrator, one of the things that I learned very quickly out of the gate is the power of the simplicity, but how doing EOS with purity, meaning how it's been taught in the book Traction, as an example by Gino Wickman, there's extreme power behind that and something so meaningful. And I got more out of EOS in its purest format than I did in its bits, bits and pieces work. So I would say that uh, while EOS is simple, it's not always easy, but if you really just follow the process and follow the tools, you will achieve extraordinary success. So that was something that I learned that I didn't know coming into the seat. And then the second thing that um, I learned through storytelling so when I was talking to clients or implementers or the world about EOS, it's that EOS helps entrepreneurs get what they want from their business, but the really cool aha stuff is that it changes people's lives for the better in really meaningful ways. 
And what I mean by that is, so we've got something called an issue solving track. It's where you mm -hmm. identify, discuss, and solve your issues, getting to the root of the issue so you're permanently solving them forever. Well, that's a skill that we can all use and benefit from our entire lives in personal relationships with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, with our friends, uh, not just at work. And so the right. legs, I call it the legs of EOS, are really wide and that what we learn through this really simple, practical set of tools and process extends everywhere in our lives. And that was something that I didn't have a full appreciation of until I got in, experienced it myself and listen to many others who had gone through that same transformation. Right. Right. It's, and it's very cool to hear that, hear that kind of, I'll hear that angle of coming into it, especially in that unique situation of, uh, of going into EOS itself. And, you know, and I really want to get into also what, you know, where EOS is fitting in and how it's been responding and is responding to the insanity around us, uh, you know, obviously first starting with the lockdown when people were just told by the government and by the realities of health, like you, you just can't be in business. <laughs> Sorry, you know, and that the insanity of that. And then now even with reopening happening at various stages around the country, all it means is even more constant change. You know, we know there's going to be a new normal, but nobody even knows what the new normal is going to be. And so there's constant change, constant adaptation. And when you get back into business, we don't even know, or even if you pivoted, do we know if that pivot's going to work out? If it's, if you try to make your best guess, but no one really knows where things are going to shake down because everything is still so much in flux. So like, what have you seen and what are you, you, you and you guys at EOS worldwide? Like how was EOS, you know, what did they do, I guess, at the beginning of the lockdown and like what's happening now in terms of helping and supporting business owners and the EOS implementers who help those business owners uh, it's a big question, I know, but like, you know, at least a couple of points on that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, we were as concerned as anybody in the middle of a worldwide pandemic and crisis about what would we be doing, you know, and um, I subscribe to the Stockdale paradox. I don't know if you love that as much as I do, Ben, but it's... it's I've been quoting it in webinars and, and things recently. <laughs> It's so good though, right? Because it teaches us to never confuse faith that we will prevail in the end with the brutal facts of reality, whatever they might be at the time. And so we, right. like so many other organizations, immediately went to think, how can we best support our EOS worldwide team, our community of professional EOS implementers, raving fans and clients of EOS all over the world, and even those mm. who never heard of us before, maybe never visited our website or read a book or a blog or anything. And so in doing so, we thought, you know, how can we ensure that entrepreneurs have access to tools readily and easily? How can we help entrepreneurs to gain calm, clarity, and confidence in such a time of crisis? And that born out of those questions, we, created a campaign called Lead Now. And it was all about that issue solving track and getting onto both public, uh, you know, very large and also regional Lead Now uh, Zoom webinars mm -hmm. to get entrepreneurs on and just solve those issues using the tools that we offer here at EOS. And it was eye-opening and, you know, just a period of such gratitude to be able to help those that would otherwise have been a little bit lost. And we've heard time and time again, for those who maybe have worked with an implementer, maybe not, but had been running their business on EOS, that if it weren't mm -hmm. for EOS, they wouldn't have survived it. They just said it was the most calming experience to know that I have an operating system that works in good times and in not good times. It gives you a rail to run on. And so um, so we responded, you know, again, by putting people first. It's always about taking care of our people, our own people mm -hmm. here, and anybody who touches the U.S. and beyond. Um, so that was fun. It was a, a, actually a silver lining part of a, a crisis is to be engaged with people who are excited about entrepreneurism and to be part of the solution. So we loved it. Uh, we're now uh, branching out into Lead Now 2.0 with learning opportunities and a podcast and other things you'll be hearing from us. Um, definitely visit us on Twitter and LinkedIn to learn more about that. 
Mm -hmm. um, but you know, at the, at the, at the basis of it all, Ben, it was this win the day. So you talk about Jonathan Smith, who I love and Mark O'Donnell, they quote this win the day, you know, seize yeah. the day. And that was it for us. It was one step at a time, one hour at a time, one day at a time, just tackling our own tough issues. We ended up pivoting our EOS conference, which was meant to be in Indianapolis in person. Yeah. Right. In the middle of all that. In the middle of all of that, we in 45 days, we converted it to a 100% virtual conference. And it was just stellar. Um, the keynote speakers, the breakout speakers, our implementers, the attendees, we ended up having 1,400 people attend that wow. virtual event. And how many, how many participate in the, uh, in the live version? Uh, it actually exceeded what we would have, you know, we had 1,200 people registered, so we were actually able to, you know, have more people participate by the name yeah. of the virtual. And we well, I didn't realize 1,200, I didn't realize, it was, I didn't realize the live one was that big, 1,200, yeah. okay, wow, okay. So, so, you know, so everything was converted to virtual implementers who typically are eyeball to eyeball with their clients around a table had to figure out how do I convert what I do in person to virtual. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that was incredible. All of our 350 EOS implementers all over the world were able to do that and just masterfully executed on that. And then every other learning event we have, there's one called uh, quarterly collaborative exchange. And then of course, when someone wants to become a professional EOS implementer, they attend a three-day intensive training called boot camp. All of those events were converted to virtual. And mm. um, so just you know that learning that we could completely transform the way that we deliver EOS in that short amount of time was, was really stellar. And so we've learned from that. We anticipate having in-person events and virtual events as we move forward but also the role of digital and what does that play with um, the future? Because to your point, well, what does that say about where you're going? Where we're going is definitely being able to distribute EOS content tools and platforms easier and better to everyone and anywhere in the world. And so that's right. something that we're accelerating. So you're given a lot of grace during crisis is what I've learned when you're imperfect and you're making mistakes, but you're doing it all for the right reason. And you're helping people. You can pilot and experiment and try some things and have that grace and forgiveness. So we've, we've gratefully been forgiven for many of the things that we are doing imperfectly, but with this great desire to just continue to perpetuate us to the world and make great things happen. So that's a little overview. Right. No, I appreciate it. And I certainly, you know, enjoyed the uh, IDS session, the, you know, identify, discuss, solve issue solving session, uh, you know, led by you and, and Mark O'Donnell that you mentioned. I think this is a great opportunity to, to be able to address this question that I think is in the back of people's minds uh, or some people's minds. Uh, and so, what, you know, what, what are your thoughts on, on that kind of question? Yeah, well, it's a great question. And the beauty behind EOS is that an organization can implement EOS many different ways and in a lot of different price points. So we've seen many, many, many organizations, what we call self-implement EOS, mm -hmm. by reading Traction and the other books in the Traction library, and having you know, a dedicated person within that organization, maybe someone on the C-suite level that takes charge and becomes kind of the ambassador for EOS and reads it and shares it with the team and cascades it through the organization. And so, and maybe joins Basecamp, the, the EOS implementer training, you know, module for a few months and they could, they could access that training as well for, you know, at least for a few months. That's right. So Basecamp is our online training platform and it has videos, downloadable tools and all kinds of things that help anyone who's interested in the world, you don't have to be an implementer to join Basecamp, just get a better, clearer understanding of how to really make it work uh, within mm -hmm. the organization. Um, and that's great. We celebrate self-implementation of EOS all the time. Um, and then for, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here, Ben, at some point mm -hmm. in the future, we will sometimes have self-implementing companies who eventually hire an implementer for whatever reasons they feel like it holds accountability or strengthens their six key components of, of the business a little better than maybe they were doing independently. Yeah. Have but, somebody um, outside the business be able to come in an outside sure. set of eyes is I've seen is hugely valuable. 
yeah, that independent perspective and somebody who can call out, uh, you know, issues or if they're sensing that somebody's not being 100, 100% open and honest around the leadership team, they can poke right. at that and, and draw out the best conversation, right? Open yeah. and honest. And so, uh, you know, for those who want to hire an implementer, there's many of them at different price points too. So don't be afraid of reaching out to EOS worldwide. We have an incredible team um, of people who can listen to you, learn a little bit more about your business and based upon your budget can align you with some good conversations with implementers all over the country, all over the world really. So, but hear me say, joining our blogs, reading the books, um, reading our clarity breaks, these are all things that are either at zero cost or very low cost to get started with EOS. And then Basecamp is another layer up and uh, you can learn more about that at eosworldwide.com. And then clearly on the higher end of the spectrum is hiring you know, a professional EOS implementer and you can do that at any part of your journey, uh, but just, just get started and try it is what I would say. And um, so there's no, uh, I want to be really clear, there's no shame for not hiring an EOS implementer. You can do great work just reading the books and implementing what you read. All right. No, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I guess the last thing I was, I was hoping to cover together is what's in the future. We got a chance to talk with Kelly Knight here. So, you know, we want to take advantage of that. What's in the future for EOS? What is, what is EOS? What's, what's next on the horizon? And maybe how did that change also before and after, you know, uh, COVID 2020? <laughs> well, not a lot changed in our VTO, which is okay. uh, stands for Vision Traction Organizer, uh, for those not familiar with that. But it's so a very little change, meaning that pre-COVID, post-COVID, our one-year goals are the same, our rocks are the same. We're accelerating a lot of things is what I would say under the, the, the guise of uh, grace that I've spoke, spoken of. Mm -hmm. We're going international, um, opening up London in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, we are in Australia, and those members are all part of a unified uh, U.S. implementer community. We are continuing to evaluate how we deliver more U.S. to the world through virtual. So again, mm -hmm. some of what we'll do will be in person, live events, face to face. Some will be virtual, and how can we continue to expand that for both base camp members and the world at large? Um, and then our digital presence. So. So much of EOS is in a binder or paper, and that's great for people who love that, but we also know the world craves EOS faster, and just the distribution of paper materials all over the world is challenging from a logistics perspective, but also mm -hmm. the speed at which we want to be able to give people what they need, it's all still fundamentally the same timeless principles and concepts that are taught in the books. So a digital platform will is something we're accelerating this year, and you'll hear Digital more platform that. for which for which parts? So for our implementer community and for end mm -hmm. users all over the world. So we have something called as an example leadership team manual, and it's literally right. an orange binder, a couple inches yeah. thick, and it's I've ordered. Binder. I've ordered many of them. <laughs> you have, you have as an implementer for sure. And so that's great. Uh, but we'll also have a digitized version of it. So imagine mm. you in session with your clients as an example, and somebody might prefer their binder and the person sitting next to them might have a tablet and they're writing inside their leadership team manual, but it's mm -hmm. digitized. So that's one example of many, many things that we're working on to make it easier, better, faster, for anyone running on EOS or who has interest in running on EOS to learn about us and to benefit from it. So accelerating digital is really important. Um, and then we're also translating all of our materials into four additional languages. Hmm. Spanish, what are they in until now? Is, are they in any languages besides English right now? We have some books in Spanish. Two of our books uh, are in Spanish, but, and also our leadership team manual, but we need to complete the Spanish translation hmm. project. Mm -hmm client materials and also marketing materials, but also French, German, and Japanese. Wow. That's something we're working on. I know those. Yeah, I've talked to the, I forgot his name, the implementer in Japan. Oh, Carl. Carl Pizer. Yeah. yeah. He's, you know, just really cool. I mean, guy speaks fluent Japanese. It's amazing to talk with him. To, to, to watch him speak on YouTube in Japanese is really cool. Isn't it neat? So, Japanese, yeah. Okay. 
and, and Ben, the funny, the fun fact to, to Carl is that he's from Detroit. So I'm from Detroit. He's from Detroit. Yeah. From Japan. It's amazing. It's a guy from Detroit is like, who did not have Japanese parents, I presume is, is, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is speaking Japanese. Anyway, it's amazing. And I got one more thing for you that I think is really yeah. important too in light of, you know, I'm our here. world today is, is some of our diversity and inclusion efforts. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's important to me, our leadership team and our community, that we are the most welcoming, most supportive of anyone, anywhere, regardless of race, ethnicity, socioeconomic backdrop, sexual orientation, gender, age, you name it. Of course. Um, so we're working really hard to make sure that, um, you know, we're in areas where we can help. Um, we're in terms of our recruiting and our outreach and our partnerships to reflect that as we continue to grow as an organization. So oh, that's interesting. What what are you what are you doing for that? So you know our recruiting efforts with the team here are meant to you know reach out to target market entrepreneur but minority organizations that might not have already heard mm. of us that we haven't been able to partner with. Right. There's a lot of right. There's a lot of groups like that. Okay. So, yeah, so, so we, are, we are listening, we are learning, we are reading, we are list, uh, watching podcasts and just generally getting a lot more educated on it, um, you know, as the world, you know, would expect that we would is to have a greater awareness of the challenges that we've had in the past and how we can do better as we move forward. So, yeah. That's a lot of what we're working on, Ben. Um, so it's, it's ironic, not a whole lot has changed, but everything has changed, meaning we're yeah. just full press, full court press to do uh, better, faster, and accelerate everything that we're doing. And it, it's an exciting time. Um, I actually was taking a clarity break. It's an exercise for those of you who haven't heard of it, uh, where you just take some quiet time for me with a notepad and a pen, and I think openly about what's working, what's not. And I was reflecting on COVID and I thought, as I made my list, there was far more good things that have come out of COVID than negative things. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that we're not acknowledging the really horrible, awful things that everyone's dealing with, but I also am balancing that against the beautiful things that have come out of it. Right. Not, not dismissing, you know, not, not discounting or dismissing those things. That's right. That's right. Cause gosh, sure. There's a lot of challenges and, and uh, a lot of, people hurting and a lot of organizations that are struggling financially. Um, and, and yet, uh, you know, trying to keep some balance is just looking at both sides of it. But uh, it's certainly been interesting times. Neither one of us, I know, Ben, have ever experienced a worldwide pandemic in our lifetime before. And I asked my parents who are their mid seven, upper seventies actually, and they've never, I mean, you know, talk about World War II, they were little, but like, I mean, it just, Vietnam, Korea, World War II. I was like, they had, you know, my parents haven't either. It's a truly a black swan event. It really is. You know, my mom, who passed away two years ago, mm. she had the best advice for me always. And one of the things that she taught me that I take with me everywhere I go is one step at a time. And I can't tell you how many times I've used that phrase, but it somehow makes crisis digestible by acknowledging mm. that can't bite off you can't solve the right. whole problem at once but steadily quite literally one step and one day at a time you keep chipping right. away at it and eventually you work win the day. Yeah, you win the day you win the day yeah. so that's what we're doing we're taking one step at a time here at eos right well i i, I appreciate it uh, i appreciate you coming on making the time giving us a little inside baseball on what's going on with eos worldwide and just helping people understand maybe more than we usually talk about what EOS is. Again, it's people know, you know, who've, who've listened or watched this uh, podcast or know me from in some other way uh, that it's, it's really important to me. And it's, you know, it's been transformational in the business I helped build and now I'm with my other clients. Uh, so just uh, very grateful to have had you on and, and to be able to share everything that you have. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Ben, for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks. All the best. And uh, we'll see everybody else on the other side. Thank you. You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf.